Okay, guys, welcome in today one of Boot Camp. My name is Monica Perry. If I haven't had the pleasure of meeting you yet, I am more than likely your market center tech trainer. So if you're in the Winston-Salem office, which is my home office, where my license is hung as an agent, if you are in Greensboro's KW1 or Chapel Hill's KW United, and most recently Durham South Point's KW Elite office, I am your market center tech, tech trainer. Oh, hi, Michelle, not Clark. I'm glad to know that um, who you are over there. I'm going to change your name so that I know who you are. Um, but welcome in. And we are going to take off today first discussing a little bit of the why behind command. Um, and then we are going to move into command itself. So bear with me real quick. I'm going to start this slideshow. And we're going to take off. Let me just make sure I can see your faces. As always, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to drop those into the chat or unmute yourself as we go through our um, resources today. All righty. So command is a system that was built by agents of KW for the agents of KW, along with the wonderful people over at Keller Williams Realty International out of Austin, Texas. And the whole reason that we built this system is because previously we were using third party resources to power our CRM, to power our marketing efforts, to power our transactional management, and what happens when you use third-party resources is that they have access to your data. And data, if you didn't know, is one of the hottest commodities in today's market. And so people really want to capitalize on our data and the data of our clients. And Keller Williams decided that they did not want that to happen. They wanted us to own all of our data. And they wanted us to, co to control our technology and be able to make it what we want. So from that, about Seven years ago, Command was born and it started being built. We got access to it in about 2017-ish is when first little pieces started rolling out. So if you've never been part of building technology, it has been a journey. Um, I know that a couple of you have been with us along the way. Command has really come a long way and we are ro rocking and rolling now. Everything works really great and we're going to start seeing updates a little fewer as far as how often they occur. Um, think more like how your phone gets updated as opposed to the weekly updates that we used to see. Um, but Gary Keller says in this wonderful red book, if you don't have a copy, please talk to your market center leadership about getting yourself a copy of the Millionaire Real Estate Agent. Gary Keller says that Nothing will have as big of an impact on our business as the number of leads that we have, period, end of story. So if you didn't know, because most of us don't when we go to real estate school, your actual job is lead generation. That is your job. Your job is to generate leads. However that is to you, there's, you know, you can be the best negotiator, the best marketer, the best person to list a house because you're really, really good at social media. All of that's fantastic. And none of that will matter if you don't have customers to work with to do those things. So your actual number one job is lead generation. And for that, it's best to have systems and models. So KW gave us those systems and models built right into our technology. So this is page 137 of the Millionaire Real Estate Agent called the Strategic Model for Generating Leads and Building Relationships. Our bullseye is allied resources. This is what we are aiming to get, right? These are our cheerleaders out in the world that as soon as someone says the world real estate, they say, you have got to call my friend Danielle. She is fantastic. She helped us get our house under contract in 48 hours and everything was wonderful. That's what you want out in the world is people screaming your names from the rooftop and saying how awesome you are. In order to get those allied resources, you have to build really strong relationships with them. So we start in the outer ring from our MET group. These are people that we know in one way, shape, or form, also known as your sphere of influence. So <clears throat> I feel like a lot of people, when they come into real estate, don't actually think about the number of people that they know. This does not have to just be your friends and family in your sphere of influence, right? Right. Who's your kid's baseball coach? 
who do you use for your dentist? Who, um, where do you go eat on a regular basis? And who owns that restaurant? And who is the server that you request when you go sit at that restaurant? Who does your dry cleaning, right? Those people are all part of your sphere of influence. And therefore, all of them should be systematically reached out to by you throughout the year. And through that systematic relationship building, you will bring in more allied resources, right? So one thing the strategic model for generating leads tells us is you have to do a combination of prospecting, which is one-to-one -one communication and marketing. So marketing is going to reach part of our MET group, yes, but predominantly the targeted group of people that we have not met yet that being the people that need to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, but don't know that we exist yet. So marketing is going to help us get there. And then outside of that, in the most outer ring is the general public that we have not met yet. So keep all of this in your mind as we go through today. And I will apologize to you guys in advance. My son has a dentist appointment and he's going by himself for the first time. He's 17. And I have my phone right here in front of me. So if you see me look down, <laughs> It's because he said he was nervous. So just in case he needs me, I might have to pause it and go on me. But I've got my phone right there. So I apologize in advance. But the reason that we stay in touch with our sphere, if, the, if you look at these waves, this is called the waves. At this first peak here, this is closing day. This is the day that we help this person buy, sell, or invest in real estate. We have closed. They have acquired or sold their property. And we are going to get our paycheck. And then the very next day, we go all the way to the bottom of this valley, all the way down. Those little tick marks are the climb back up to the next time that that person buys, sells, or invests in real estate. And studies show us that this can be anywhere from three to 10 years on average. So that means that whole time, you have to stay in touch with those people. And this is not just for us in the real estate industry. You can think about this for every industry, right? If I just got a roof, the chances that I'm going to need a roof again tomorrow are zero. However, as the years pass, I will need a new roof. So you're going to need to stay in touch with me or I'm going to go to the closest person to me. And don't take this personally, you guys, but your own family will forget that you sell real estate if you don't remind them that you sell real estate. I can attest to that because that actually did happen to me. Um, but it is really important. And this is where most agents fail, okay? This is where most agents fail is post-closing, they stop talking to those people and they stop talking to them about real estate, okay? So think about, I went to the mall for the first time in a long time on Saturday, and I went into Bath and Body Works. We went into a couple of other stores at the mall. Um, if I walk into a store and someone says, hey, how can I help you today? By default, I'm gonna say, I'm good. I'm just looking, right? We all do that. I'm just looking. But then say I go and find some jeans or some shoes or whatever that I want. Am I going to circle back and try to find that first person that greeted me at the door and asked me how they could help me? Or am I going to grab the closest person to me and say, excuse me, I want to try these shoes on, right? I'm going to grab the closest person to me. That's just how we work as people. So again, don't take it personally, but if you don't stay in front of people, for the time that they need you to assist them, they will forget that you exist. They will go online to something that rhymes with pillow and they will find a person in the closest physical proximity to them to help them, right? So that is why it's so important to maintain your database. And when I tell people that they really need to be doing lead generation about two hours a day, people are like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. You want me to actually call people from nine to 11 in the morning, they're at work. I don't want to bother them. They're my friend. They're my family member. They're at work. I don't want to bother them, right? So that's not what we want to do. We're not bothering them. We're going to talk to them about family, occupation, recreation, and dreams, also known as the Ford method of conversation. Um, I'm going to give you an example. Danielle and I have known each other for quite a while. Danielle, do I have kids? Yes. Do my, what do my kids do? 
Well, I know that your son, who's 17 and going to the dentist today, plays ball and is going to go to school, college. Exactly. And play ball. exactly. Because the last time that Danielle and I spoke, we talked about that. So when I tell you guys to lead generate, it's really just having conversations and building relationships with the people you know, but you have to do it in a systematic way. They say 36 touches for our sphere of influence per year right? And I don't know about you guys, but I can't talk to somebody in some way, shape, or form 36 times throughout the year without some kind of a system and keep up with everything that we discussed, right? So in comes CRMs or customer relationship management systems, which is part of what command does for us. So I always like to start with the why behind what I'm teaching you, because I can sit here and show you buttons to push and all that kind of stuff, but none of that's going to matter to you if you don't know why you're doing it, right? So how did buyers find their real estate agent? This is from the 2021 National Association of Realtors Home Buyer and Seller Generational Trends Report. It comes out every spring, late March, early April, somewhere in there. I love this thing. You can get it. Just go online. I also gave you the link in the resources that I dropped into the chat. 40% of all buyers in 2021 were referred to their agent by a friend, neighbor, or relative. Guess who those folks are? It's those agents allied resources that are in the target of that bullseye. I want you to look at something. Look at the ages, 75 to 95, 32, 31, 34, 37, 45, big jump, 31 to 40 year olds. Look at the 22 to 30 year olds that are hitting the market. These are the people that are starting to buy right now. 52%, that's 20% more, right? So that's what's making this trend up. And we feel that this is going to continue to happen. So referral of your real estate agent by a friend, neighbor, or relative is going to continue to tick up. That means that you have to be in front in order to get your piece of that pie. Same thing with sellers. The only difference is you see the tick up in the 31 to 40 year old range. That's because 22 to 30 year olds aren't usually selling a house yet. Um, not as much as this age group, but you're going to see that continue to climb as well. The other thing, the number of real estate agents someone actually speaks to before they choose who they're going to work with, 73% y'all talk to one agent. Again, you have to get there first, okay? You have to get there first. So I'm not going to go through every single one of these things, but you guys get the point. Be there first. Be out there in the world. Talk to the people that you know in a systematic way, right? 76% um, of buyers said that they would use their real estate agent again. But how many buyers actually did? 13%. Big discrepancy. And that's because people close and then they stop talking to their people. Don't do that. I was notorious for that. Please don't do that to yourself. Learn from my mistakes. All right. So let's jump forward. I wanted to show you guys this real quick. The MREA2 is going to be coming out sometime. I'm not sure when. Um, but this is going to be the lead generation model that we see in the MREA2, okay? Everywhere that we see teal, this is a piece of command and where it fits into the puzzle, right? So you guys have a copy of this too on the sheet that I dropped in the chat. So prospecting and marketing, this is just a sales funnel, you guys. It's where we always start with prospecting and marketing, right? We capture those pieces of information and we bring them down. They become a lead in some way, shape, or form. They want to do something with real estate. We don't know what it is yet. When we, That's when we start talking and offering them to help them, but it's one way. We're offering, they're not responding. Once we get into a conversation with each other, that person then becomes a contact. We become connected. We can then use smart plans, which Jose and I were just discussing, in order to get them to the cultivation phase where we can help them buy, sell, or invest in real estate. Then they drop into that pipeline of where we're going to have an appointment with them, whether it's a buyer consultation or a listing presentation, they become our active client, they go under contract and they close. 
And then here's where it updated. Boop, that little arrow right there, which is called the infinite loop sales model. So once they close, we're going to take them back up to the top of the funnel and drop them back in. Um, another word for this is stairways of opportunity um, that I hear about a lot. So think about Amazon. I know we've all been shopping on Amazon, y'all. It's Christmas. They do that to us all the time, right? I buy a pair of Nike Air Force Ones, right? And then they're like, oh, maybe you need socks for those shoes. Maybe you need this. Maybe you need shoe cleaner. They keep dropping me back in and filtering me back through to get me to purchase something else, right? So you've got to do the same with your business. But look at how many pieces of business you can get from this. So all of us probably came from a previous line of work before we came into real estate. So you let a previous coworker know that you joined KW, you are here for them. If they have any questions about real estate, you are the local expert. You put them on those smart plans, the monthly neighborhood nurture, the birthday and the quarterly call. Those are all smart plans provided to us by KW that we'll look at in the second half of today's class. So when they get that promotion, maybe they're ready to buy their first home. You've been talking to them, yet they come to you to buy that house, right? You do a bang up job because you're a KW agent and I know you will. And then once they close, we're going to continue the conversation. You're going to add their new neighborhood into their monthly neighborhood nurture, home anniversary every year. Congratulations on one year, two years, three years in your home. You're going to start inviting them to client appreciation events. Don't be scared of client appreciation events. Vendors love to give you money to do this so that they can be there with you. They just don't buy booze. So if you want booze at your client appreciation event, you gotta go get that yourself. Um, Thanksgiving pie giveaways. We have a lot of agents that just did that. You could give them newsletters. You're gonna continue with that birthday and quarterly call plan. Then, because you stayed in close emotional proximity to them, when their friend or neighbor says, I think I'm gonna go ahead and sell my house, your name is the first one that comes out of their mouth. And then you get that piece of business. You're now at two. You thank them. You drop by with a gift. You remind them that when they got their home inspection done on their starter home, that there was only five years of roof life left. So in three years, you tell them it's time to start talking to vendors and getting money together to get a new roof, right? They're amazed that you remembered that they needed to do that. So then when they're ready to move up, you're going to get to sell their house and help them buy a new house. You're now at four transactions four from one person if you stay in touch with them. So this book tells us that for every 12 people in our MET database that we communicate with, with 36 touches a year, we will get two pieces of business. For every 12 MET people in your database, if you communicate with them with 36 touches a year, will produce two pieces of business. And the reason we say a 12 to two ratio as opposed to a six to one is because it's usually going to be a piece of personal business or a piece of referral business, right? So for every 12, you'll get one piece where they're like, yes, I do need to sell my home. Or you'll get one where my mom needs to sell her home because she wants to move to Cabo, right? Whatever that may be. As opposed to when you're marketing, you're going to be in a 50 to one ratio, right? Huge difference there, both necessary. Marketing based because marketing is scalable, prospecting enhanced because prospecting is easier, especially when you're getting started in this business, okay? So any questions on this stuff, guys? Do you guys kind of get the point of why it's so important? I know that it's, you know, you hear it and you're like, yeah, whatever. But I promise you, it does make a difference in your life as a real estate agent. Um, let me drop this stuff back in the chat again because I know that we had a couple of people jump in. One of my favorite adages from Bold is, real estate is simple, but it's not easy, right? It's simple. The most important thing is how many leads you get, period. And you have to work to get those leads. It's a very simple equation. The more people you talk to, the more people that you stay in close emotional proximity to, the more pieces of business that you're going to get, right? But it's not easy to do that stuff all the time. So 
we just want to make sure that we are doing our lead generation as needed, okay? So now that we've talked about the why behind command, let's go log in. Best practice when you're working in command is to use Google Chrome as your browser, okay? Mac people, I know you love Safari and that's okay. And if you're in there, because I've had several people recently, Mac's done some updates that not just command, but lots of websites have been like being weird and not opening stuff and things like that. So if you ever experience something like that, your first and best bet is to just go ahead and open a Google Chrome window and you should be okay. Any questions about that? Everybody good? All right. Then we're going to navigate ourselves to agent.kw.com. Go ahead and bookmark this for yourself. You'll make your life easier if you don't have to type it in every time. You can just click the little button right up here at the top. Good deal. And then we're going to come to a window that looks like this. We're going to log in with our KW credentials. If you don't yet have your KW credentials and you have a question about that, please hang out after class and let me know but mine are mperry15 with my password. So this is not an email to log into command. It is whatever KW set up for you, which is usually some variation of your first initial, your last name and a number. So any questions about that? Good deal, awesome. Okay, so once we get in here, we're going to take a look at our dashboard really quickly. I always tell people to think about command like your cell phone. Right? It's a platform. It's got apps. You took it out of the box. The apps are over here on the left hand side. If you ever forget what these apps are, you can always click the white KW on the red background and pop that out to remind yourself. These are our pre installed apps. Some you're going to use more than others. This is our home screen, which is full of widgets and it is customizable. So you can click customize home. You can move your widgets around however you like. I don't have my notepad turned on right now. I could turn that on and then I can click apply. And once I do that, it's going to rearrange itself from where I had it initially, right? So very similar to a phone, if you think about it, or a tablet, right? We also have a store up here at the top now. My favorite thing to tell you guys is to lead with revenue. Please don't spend money that you don't have to spend if you're not making money yet, right? The biggest impact you're going to have on your business is to start it off by talking to the people that you already know in a systematic way. I'm not saying don't ever go pay for leads. I'm just saying why go pay for leads when you haven't exhausted the resource that is free, right? Because we have two ways to pay for things. We can pay for them with time, and we can pay for them with money. Right now, you probably have more time than you have money. So right now, use your time as your commodity as opposed to your dollars, okay? Until you've exhausted that resource and you still are trying to build your business, then maybe go get some leads, right? Make sense? All right, so let's hop into settings. In command, we're gonna click on our name in the upper right corner and drop down and go into our settings. We're gonna review a few things here. You can have a lot of integrations that are attached to command and you wanna make sure that all of those are attached here in your settings. Settings likes to be a little bit slow to load sometimes, so we'll give that a chance to do it. If you're using DocuSign, which is what KW provides to us for electronic signatures, you want to make sure that your DocuSign account is connected back here in settings because we're always going to start in command when we're doing a transaction. We're going to be looking at that tomorrow. Tomorrow is probably the most important day of command boot camp because it's where we talk about transactions and you want to make sure that you're good at doing transactions so that you can get yourself paid, right? If you're in one of my market centers that is using DotLoop because your office is paying for it for you, make sure that DotLoop is connected back here. If not, you don't need to worry about DotLoop's connection. Okay. Facebook, two separate spots to connect Facebook right there. Okay. 
The first is for post scheduling. That means that we can do free social media post to Facebook through command. That does mean that you need to have a Facebook business page. You cannot post to your personal Facebook account through command, only your Facebook business page. So the post scheduling is just free posts, right? Down here a little bit further is the ads manager. This is where you can do paid ads to generate leads through Facebook. So if you're going to be using both, you need to have both connected. Recently added is the ability to post schedule to Instagram, okay? Again, with Instagram, it needs to be a business account. So you have two choices here. You can take your existing Instagram account and you can um, transition it over to being a business account. There's three levels of Instagram accounts, personal, um, influencer, and business. You want it to be a business account. If you don't wanna give up your personal Instagram account to a business account, you can create a second Instagram account that is going to be your business account that you connect back here. But before you connect Instagram here, you need to connect Instagram to Facebook, okay? And I've got all those directions laid out for you guys. And if you ever have any questions, I'm here for you. Always feel free to text me, okay? Or set up a one-on-one -on -one with me. If you like Twitter, you can also post to Twitter. You just need to connect your account back here. For posting, you do not have to make Twitter a business account. But for paid ads, you do need to make Twitter a business account, okay? Porch. This is a place where we can go and upload the summary of a home inspection and get a free repair estimate report from Porch. So that's that integration, if you're interested in that. Keller Covered is Keller Williams Insurance. We can connect that in opportunities so our clients can get quotes from Keller Covered. Google Calendar and Gmail. This is really beneficial because within our contacts, if I email somebody through my Gmail, it tracks that in their activity timeline within their contact. If you don't have that connection made, you can't do that. So if you wanna have that ability, then make sure you have that connected. And then Office 365, the same if you use Outlook as your email. Um, you might wanna connect Office 365, okay? Any questions about these upper ones and how we get those connected, the fact that we need to be a business page, et cetera. Good, awesome. A Little bit lower, command mail. Command is the official, e command email is the official email provider of command and it includes 5,000 free email sends per month. This is going to be emails that are sent through smart plans. This is going to be emails that are sent through campaigns. This is going to be emails that within opportunities, if we want to send a client update, it's going to be using command mail. So if you think you're going to have to go above 5,000 per month, that's okay. You do have the ability to upgrade at a cost. Most people don't use over 5,000 a month, however, unless you just have a super giant database, okay? I'm gonna click manage right here. And you're going to see the sender name is going to be from me. And if they reply to the email, I need to make sure that I have the correct email address where I want that reply to go right here. Because this Monica Perry Realtor WSNC at gmail.com that I used when I signed up for KW because it was my very first real estate Gmail account. I don't check that email. So if somebody replied to an email and it went there, I would have no idea because I don't ever look in that email. So you want to make sure that it's an email that you actually check. Does anybody have any questions about that? That's pretty important. Good? Sweet. If you like MailChimp, if you came from a different company and you used to use MailChimp or you just like MailChimp in general, you have the ability to connect it here. This is what we had before we had built command email. So you do have that ability, right? Just remember, we're independent contractors. So if you don't wanna use that, you don't have to. If you don't wanna use command email, you don't have to. The only thing you have to do in command is turn in your opportunities, which is your transactions, paperwork, and your request to get paid. Those are the only two things that you have to do in this system.
I love this system, having been in this business for 14, almost 15 years now, because everything is in one place. And I used to have to enter stuff in like seven or eight places, which was not very fun. It was a lot of spreadsheets and importing and exporting. And I was not a huge fan of that. Um, so I love that this brought everything together. Twilio is one of the few places that I'm going to tell you guys to green light spending a little bit of money. And that is because it's so inexpensive. Twilio is a mass texting platform, which gives us the ability to mass text our database, one. Number two, in smart plans to automate text to go out as a part of the smart plan. Okay, you cannot do it without Twilio. Twilio does not use your cell phone number. When you sign up for Twilio, this extra small package is $3.16 per month. You get 300 credits and you set up your own phone number from their choices in the system. So if you want to do bulk texting or automated texting through smart plans, you do need to have Twilio. So does anybody have any questions about that? Good. Awesome. Okay. So last but not least, while we're back here in settings, I want to look at connect settings over here on the left and talk about your marketing profile because this is super important. This profile powers your website, your mobile app that clients use to search for homes, your email designs that you're going to send via smart plans or campaigns. It's going to format your signature in those emails and all of that kind of fun stuff. So I'm going to jump into my website really quickly to show you guys what I mean. So this logo, this team logo, which is a fake team that I just created for the purposes of a demo and my picture, my headshot, my phone number, my email address, my license number, my company's license number and address and my Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube and Twitter links are all populating from this marketing profile. So I cannot stress to you enough the importance of keeping this information up to date. Okay, it's super important, even if you're not going to use Keller Williams websites. Okay, even if um, you're on a team and y'all use a completely different website. And here's the reason why we went to my specific website, right? But say that somebody just was looking at kw.com, the generic kw for the whole country. And somebody said, okay, well, I need to find an agent. So I'm going to look, I'm going to scroll through these really fast so that we don't throw shade on anybody for not having their marketing profile done. But if I search for an agent in Winston-Salem, watch what happens. Look at all these people whose pictures are missing. I mean, just look at that. It's a ton. So if you don't update your picture in there, when somebody searches for a Winston-Salem, a Greensboro, a Chapel Hill, or a Durham agent, if your picture's not there, more than likely, they're not going to click on your profile, just being honest, right? They're looking for somebody's face. So make sure you update that stuff. If you are going to be using your website, make sure this little toggle is turned on. Because if you don't, when somebody tries to go to your website, they're going to get redirected to the generic KW website. Okay? Because your branding is turned off. And the last thing that I will say about that is, um, if you're going to use your KW website, we do not use WWW. WWW is going away. It's getting phased out. So when you put your stuff on your business card, make sure that you don't put it on there because watch what happens, right? MonicaPerry.kw.com. Boom. Takes you right to my website. But if I say www.monicaperry, Dot kw.com. That looks scary. You don't want to scare people. Okay. Please do not put www in front of your website. Questions on that? Awesome.
whole deal. Okay, let's talk about downloading the command app. I gave you guys the link on here to both iPhone and Android phones. Download the command app. If you have not downloaded the command app, please download it. Okay, I had some agents, um, not going to name which market center it was in, that um, did not know about the command app somehow, <laughs> even though I post about it all the time. And now that they have it, they're like, this is the best thing. How? I didn't know. I didn't know it was there. Right. So please do yourself a favor and download the command app. The command app is command desktop on the go. It is not made to replace command desktop. It is made to enhance it and enhance your experience. So it's not going to have all of the same functionality as the desktop experience. It's got contacts. It's got the ability to put contacts on smart plans, but not the ability to build a smart plan on the go, because hopefully you sat down at your desk and did that. But then if you're hosting an open house and the person leaves, you can put them on the smart plan as they walk out the door from the app. Does that make sense? All right. Awesome. So please, please, please download the command app. All right, so next up, we are going to go into contacts. Okay, and guys, I apologize. My throat is sore. I'm starting to get a little nervous. <laughs> I may be getting sick, but we're gonna just push past it. All right, so I'm here in my contacts. I'm going to very quickly get this off of my screen and go into my demo contacts. YouTube loves to take down videos um, that have people's contact information. These are all fake people. They are not real people for the people at YouTube that are reviewing this video, okay? Um, so all this beautiful rainbow of colors you see here are tags. This is one of the most important things I can tell you to do with your database and why? Because people are used to curated experiences now. It's 2022. We all have Netflix. I know you do. When you log into Netflix, Netflix says, hey, Monica, here's some stuff that you might want to watch today. It curates the experience to me based off things that I already do, right? So just keep that in mind. When you're using tags, you can target your messaging, right? Danielle and I discussed that my son plays baseball. I have a huge, like a second family from baseball because we've been doing it now for 13 years, right? That's a long time. I know a lot of people from baseball. So I can actually target my baseball family with a specific message. Hit a grand slam, right? Get a home warranty with me when you list, whatever, right? Um, you can't do that if you don't have a way to segment out your database. It can be based off of people that you go to church with, people that you're in a book club with, people that you know from college, people that you know from high school, whatever it may be, right? Use tags. We can do it to target our buyers, previous, future, sellers, previous, future, right? So tags are super important. All right, so that's what those are. Let's look at the import. When you go to import contacts, say that you had a previous database or um, you exported your contacts from iPhone or your Android phone, okay? Then we can use the import wizard, okay? Before we had the import wizard, we got to use this handy dandy template. And if you want to use it, it is still fantastic and you can use it, but I'm downloading it so that you can see it. Give me one second to download. It's almost there. There it is. We used to have to fit everything into this spreadsheet, right? Super long. Let me move that zoom bar there. Look at how long that thing goes on for. Really large spreadsheet. And it had to be in this exact format or it would not upload. And it was not fun, I promise. But with the wizard, you don't have to do that anymore. You can literally just browse your computer for the spreadsheet that you are using and upload it right there. And it'll say, your spreadsheet says name, 
What do you want that to match up to in command? Your spreadsheet says phone. What do you want that to match up to in command? You just walk through and match the columns up and then hit import and it'll do the rest of the work for you. The one thing that command does not let you duplicate two things rather is a, is a phone number and an email address, okay? So if you already had Monica Perry 3365758473 in your database and you tried to import me, it's going to fail because it's not gonna let you duplicate my phone number or my email. Does that make sense? So if you have customers that share an email, only put one person with the email because it's not going to allow you to add the second. Does that make sense? Okay. So the other thing I wanna touch on here before we move into adding an individual contact is if you were on a team, that includes productivity coaching. If you were on a team, or you are in productivity coaching, you are on a team account in command, okay? So when I drop down up here, you see this is my personal side of command, and I also have my team side of command. Your contacts can only exist on one of those sides, okay? So if you have them in your personal side, you can't add them to your team and vice versa, right? When you're on a team, including productivity coaching, you are more than likely going to need to create your transactions under the team. So here's your best practice, because I get asked this question all of the time. Put your contact into your personal account first, okay? So maybe you've got 20 people from your sphere of influence. Put them in your personal account first, I'm gonna open this fake contact, YouTube, fake. This is Brittany Beyer. She's in my personal side of command. She's like, okay, Monica, I'm ready to move forward and purchase. Fantastic, Brittany. I need to create Brittany an opportunity to, facil to facilitate her transaction. I'm going to click these three dots and I'm going to change her to my team account then I can create the transaction for her under my team. When I do it this way, notice here that it says it's under Monica Perry's account and that Monica Perry is the owner of that contact, right? When I move her to my team, it's going to be under my team account, but I am going to be the owner of the contact. If you add it directly to your team, it makes the team the owner of the contact. That's not what we want, because then if you graduate from productivity coaching, you decide you don't want to be on that team anymore, then it creates an issue because your contacts or your contacts at KW on your team at the firm, period, we don't want to keep them from you. But if you put them under your team side of command, they have to individually release every single one of those contacts back to you. Don't do that. Just put them in your personal side move them over and you can move them over in bulk as well. So if I wanted to move all of these people over, I could select them all. I can bulk action change account. Again, I still keep, um, Michelle, then I would ask your um, team lead to release a couple of those to you. And it depends on what the team is. So if you wanna send me a text and let me know if it's like productivity coaching, I could probably just help you out and do it for you. If it's a team, that's going to be up to the Rainmaker, but they can do it. But it's better to head it off now than it is to wait for down the line. Okay, yeah, I can help you with PC. We'll chat about that after. Cool. Now, if you get a lead from the team, it's supposed to be owned by the team, y'all, including productivity coaching. If they run a Facebook ad, if you... Um, if they're like, this person emailed us about my listing, here they are, then that does belong to the team. But when it's like your sphere of influence, then that should be owned by you. Okay. Questions about that? Good. Cool. The other thing from this view is your customization of columns. Okay. So you can see right now I have recently active. That means that they were on my website. The last time I contacted them, their tags, their phone number, their email, and the last time I updated their contact, okay? 
I can come up here and quick customize columns and move this stuff around. So maybe I don't need to know who was recently active or last contacted, then I can move that and click apply and it will move my columns for me. I have this pared down to only showing my demo contacts because I use the filters to do that. Okay. And so once I have my view the way I like it, I can also show up to 500 contacts at one time. Once I have my view the way that I like it, I can come up here and drop this down and create a smart view, right? So when I first came in here, I was in all of my contacts and all I had to do was drop down my smart view list and pick my demo smart view. And it brought up just those contacts in that format that I wanted them to be laid out in. Does that make sense? So smart views make your life a lot easier. And you can also see your smart views in the command app. Can you keep them like that to like save it so that every time you log in that it does that? You can. If you want to see them that way every single time, then you are going to set it as the default view. Okay. Okay. And you can click manage and you can do all of this here and say, say address first. I could edit and stuff like that. And then you can pick your default view. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. Pretty good. And you can have multiple smart views, y'all. So maybe when I'm making phone calls, I want phone numbers first in the list, right? Because um, I can just work my way down, down. But maybe when I'm checking for recently active people on my website, I want that recently active column to show up first then I can have a smart view set that way. I can have a smart view set to show me only people that I recently added, like people I added in the last five days or something like that. And you can set up multiple smart views, that, you know, and just go through the list. Great questions. Anybody else? All right, so bulk actions, Let's look through those real quick. We can add an activity, a note, a tag, right, like these. Um, the email list, I hope that they remove this. I've asked for it to get removed. This is only if you're using MailChimp. This doesn't have anything to do with command mail. Okay. Um, you can put them on a smart plan. You can archive them. D uh, deletion process for command is purposely two steps. So that you don't accidentally delete something you didn't mean to delete. Right. So you archive it. And then say you had to archive 20 people, you go back into settings where we were earlier and you can go to the archive and permanently delete everybody. So when I said that it doesn't allow you to um, duplicate emails and phone numbers, if they're in your archive, it will not allow you to add them. But you can go back to your archive and restore them or you can go back to your archive and delete them permanently. Make sense? We can do that change account. We can export them. Um, as a CSV file, a comma separated value file, mailing labels, mailing labels as PDFs, mark them as a lead, remove tags from a group of people, or send a text message if we're using Twilio, that would look like this, okay? They, this, these are fake people, so they don't have phone numbers. And this phone number is fake, YouTube. Please don't take my video down again. Um, but it will show you if you mass text who's missing a phone number, you can do your text here. You can upload a picture if it was like an invitation to something. Upload this picture of my daddy. And it will calculate the cost for you. And then you can send it off, right? So that's how you can bulk text to a group of people. And you could share a copy with another KW associate. So maybe you're not on the same team, but you're going to work together as partners. You could share it with somebody and you can also unmark as a lead from a bulk action. Everybody good? Sweet. All right. My preferred way to add contacts, however, I know that people don't like to hear this, is individually. And this is why. If you put junk into a database, you're going to get junk out of your database. You want good quality information in here, right? That means you want people's full names, their email, 
their phone number, their home address, their birthday. What do they like to eat? What do they like to drink? Where do they like to go? What are their kids' names? What are their pets' names? Who's their favorite NFL football team? Go Cowboys. That was an awesome game last night. I felt really bad for the Colts, though, at the end a little bit. Um, but right? Those are the things that build relationships. And that's what we're trying to do. Real estate is a contact sport. We need to make lots of relationships and we need to build them out to the best of our ability. And we can't do that without information about our people. Okay. Gary Keller used to use a recipe box with index cards to write people's stuff down on them. And every time he talked to them, he flipped over the index card and said, called 12-5-2022 son going to college for baseball then he would take a note the next time then he would take a note the next time this is essentially gary keller's recipe box digitized right so that that's the whole purpose of this so that's why i like adding contacts individually i would rather you guys have 200 really great contacts in here than 5000 half contacts okay so 201 Club, you're probably going to hear a lot about that in the coming months. Um, I told you guys when this came out, anybody who's been here for a while, that Command would start being able to give us back insights into our businesses. And now we have those statistics. And it says that 30, I think it's 32,000 KW associates that have between 201 and 1,000 contacts have a median income of $119,000 from real estate. 201 to 1,000 contacts. It doesn't mean you just have to have them in here and just magically you're going to make $120,000. You have those contacts in here. You communicate with them with 36 touches a year. And those people are making a median gross commission income of $119,000. So if that is not enough to light a fire under you to get your folks in here and start talking to them, I don't know what to tell you, right? So super important. But adding a contact is pretty simple. Full name, email address, primary phone number, lead source type, super important, right? Where did you find them? Are they part of baseball? I added baseball. Are they in your sphere of influence? Where did you get them from? Okay. You can also make the lead source a contact, right? You can mark them as a lead. Remember, that's one way. I'm offering one way to help you. You're not talking back to me yet. Once they talk back with me, they become a contact. You can add tags. Move that Zoom bar. We've got pre-installed tags. They're gray. And then if you want a new tag, um, new year something. Right, that doesn't exist. So I could now create that custom tag to be used in my database over and over again. Add more info, additional contact info. How do they prefer to be talked to? Extra email, extra phone number, home address. These are populated by Google. If they don't yet exist in Google because they're a new construction or something, then you can create them manually with that button down here. If you don't know where someone lives and you're in the business of selling residential real estate, that's not good. You can't give people hyperlocal information if you don't know where they live, right? So make it a goal to get addresses into your command database. You can update their social media profiles here. Under the about section, we can do birthdays. We can do their home anniversary. We can add relationships to our contacts. We can add where they work and what their job title is. And then my second favorite thing to tags is these custom fields. This is where you can get the meat. What are their children's names? What's their favorite baseball team, favorite basketball team, favorite football team? Where do they, you know, do they like tea? Do they like wine? What are their hobbies? All kinds of stuff that you can use these custom fields for. So any questions about actually adding them in? Monica, I have one question. Yeah. Um, so say that you used a different platform previously, like mm -hmm. Brivity, mm -hmm. right? So could you take your CSV file like from that and then put it into this? I know that, you know, it when it comes yeah. in, you can kind of clean up the filter before you 
Yep, absolutely. You just use this import and you drop the file right here, Danielle. Yeah. And then you click continue and it'll let you map out so that everything lines up together. And then you okay. can. And so, okay, that's what I was wondering. Because I was wondering if since it, if it would kick it out. You know how like they were saying if there's like a duplicate. So like if. If you already have the person in command, it's just not going to duplicate that one. And okay. it'll give you a log at the end that says this contact didn't import because this phone number already exists in command. Perfect. Okay. All right. Thank it you. That. Can command automatically get birth dates from their social media? No, it cannot. That's a great question, though. Anybody else? Good. Awesome. Let's jump in to one of my test contacts. For those of you who have not met me yet, he's not in here today, it's surprising. Um, Dakota and Sasha Perry are my dogs and they both have email addresses and they are test contacts that show us how to do everything in command. So this is Dakota's um, profile. You can see that Dakota has a little check mark. That means he has an account with my agent website, okay? He's got tags. He's got a health score of 100%. We have a database health score for our people. That's his fake phone number. That's his real email address, but it's for a dog, YouTube, so please don't take it down. Um, lead source, sphere of influence. He's under my personal account. I'm the owner of the contact. Based on his address, he lives in the neighborhood Skybrook in Huntersville, North Carolina right? Those neighborhoods are established by next door. If you want to use the monthly neighborhood nurture, which is my favorite smart plan, you have to have a primary at least neighborhood assigned to that person. I like to have multiple neighborhoods assigned to them so that they don't just get one boring email that's just got, I mean, maybe there's nothing for sale in Skybrook right now. That wouldn't be a very fun email to get. So I like to give them a few different neighborhoods maybe just around their neighborhood or maybe the neighborhood they live where they would live if they were a millionaire and where they grew up as neighborhoods as an example. So the neighborhood needs to exist in next door, birth date, spouse, where they work, favorite restaurant, etc. Over here on the right is their timeline. So you can see everything I've done with Dakota is in his timeline, right? This email is a Gmail email, right? I told you if you connected your Gmail, it would track inside of the contact. This is one of those. If you send a smart plan email, it tells you. This, this one was actually sent from campaigns. This one was sent from smart plans, right? So it tracks where they're all coming from. I can filter by date range. I can filter by activity. Was it a meeting? Was it a call? Was it an email? Was it a text? Um, all these different things I can filter by here in their activity timeline. Any transactions I've had with him show up right here under opportunities. And under smart plans, any smart plans that he's currently on, right? This is my holiday drip email smart plan. He's on the monthly neighborhood nurture smart plan, and he's on my happy new year 2022 smart plan. So let's look at what those smart plans look like. We're going to start straddling the lines of contacts and smart plans. We're going to take a quick break here in a minute, and then we are going to move fully into smart plans. So let me get into Dakota's email here. So when Dakota gets emails from me, come on, it's being slow. We'll give it a little grace, it's Monday. This is what they would look like. So this one was from Halloween, right? It's got my branding on it. I told you guys, it won't come from my email. This is my command email, email address. But if he replies, it's going to go to my reply to email address, which is Monica Perry at kw.com, right? All of this stuff and the signature of the email is populating for my marketing profile. 
And this is what those emails look like. Okay. Uh, monthly neighborhood nurture emails look like this. So again, you have to have neighborhoods established in the contact card in order for these to work. But they can see what's happening in all these neighborhoods that they are interested in. And they can click explore neighborhood. They're not bound to an MLS area. So they can look at property all across the country through these, okay? All across the country and going worldwide. So he can look at what's for sale in Shallowford Lakes in Louisville, as well as what's for sale at Virginia Beach, as well as what is for sale at Curie Beach, right? All kinds of different areas that he can look at. See, this is what I mean. There's nothing for sale in Sherwood Forest um, Road neighborhood right now. So if this was the only thing on his monthly neighborhood nurture, that would not be very fun, right? So either pick some properties, um, some neighborhoods that are around where they live or be like, if you won $20 million, where would you move? I would move to the beach. So that's why we have this one set up that way. Um, but there you go. So that's what those look like. Um, we can also do tasks. So like I said, command is fully um, integrated and works together. So you have access to tasks from within the contact. You have a whole task applet right here. You have a task widget on your home screen of command. You have a task widget on the home screen of the command app and they all work together. So if I add it here, it shows up in every, it shows up everywhere, et cetera. Does that make sense? Notes. I love taking notes when we have phone calls, especially now that we have the command app. So um, definitely worth it because then the next time you talk to them, you can say, hey, oh my gosh, the last time we were talking, your um, son got into a fender bender. How'd everything work out? Is the car fixed? Are they feeling okay, et cetera? Or the last time we talked, you know, you guys were going on vacation. I hope it was amazing. How was Disney? Did your kids love it, et cetera, right? We can't have the number of conversations we're supposed to have and remember what we said without giving ourselves some kind of a system. So this gives us the ability to do that. We can also set up saved searches from within a contact. So that's really important. One important thing to note about saved searches is that they cannot receive the saved search if they don't have an account on our website. So we're going to deep dive into websites in our mobile app on Wednesday, but I always like to take this chance to bring it up because when we're here in the contact, this is my best practice for this. If you meet somebody and they're like, yeah, I am thinking of buying, but it's probably going to be, I don't know, six months, like we have a few credit things. We need to wait for this to happen. We got to get a new roof before we sell our house, whatever, whatever it is, right? Um, but you want them to start being able to look at houses and you want to know what they're looking at and what they're liking. So you can see kind of the trends and their preferences. Go to your own website with their permission. Well, I would love to set you up to be able to look at properties on my website. Would you like that? And they say, yes. Fantastic. I will set up an account for you with your email. I'm going to go ahead and make your cell phone number the password. Once you're in the system, feel free to change your password to whatever you want. And they're going to say, okay, great. And you're going to come over here and you're going to click sign up on your own website. You're going to enter their first and last name and their email address. Give them a password. It could just be a generic password, whatever you want to do for the password. Accept, click sign up. And I'm going to show you exactly what happens. When you do it, let me think of somebody I have not done before. I'm going to do Barbara Fire. Oh, no, Gmail. Okay. I'm going to give them a password. 
I'm going to click accept and I'm going to click sign up. My phone just dinged for my command app and said I got a new agent site notification. Barbara Buyer created an account on your agent website. Here's the notification on my desktop. Agent site notification received from Barbara Breyer. It created her a contact and command. She should have a little green check mark because she has an account on my agent website now. And now I can come over and set her up save searches. And then she can end up getting emails like this one. You have one update in your drawn area. Price decrease $21,000 on 511 North Peacehaven Road. They can go view their save search. It'll take them to whatever was set up as those parameters. Boom, they can see the save search. Go ahead, Whitney. So say that I have somebody in my contact list or mm -hmm. in my like contacts on the uh, command, uh -huh. but then they go to the website and then they like set up their own thing. Would that create two people in our contact list? Mm -mm, not if they use the same account, okay. like the same email address. So Dakota, per example, like Barbara Byer was brand new, right? She wasn't in command uh -huh. at all. Dakota already was. So when Dakota got set up, all it did was give them the green check mark. Okay. That showed the connection to the agent site. Gotcha. Thank you. You're so welcome. Great question. When you guys ask questions, that's what we're here for, right? Good deal. Okay, cool. So that takes us to the end of contacts. Um, get in here, play around. Really, there's a lot that you can do. I'm going to go ahead and give us a four minute break and we'll come back together and we'll start looking at smart plans. So make sure you ask plenty of questions because smart plans is really something that can make your life easier. Okay, see you guys back in about four or five minutes. Resume. All right, so now let's go take a look at smart plans. So Smart Plans is the fourth applet on the left. Remember, you can click that white KW on the red background to pop that out. And once we get into Smart Plans, if you've never made a Smart Plan, you're not going to see Smart Plans here, and that's okay. I have lots of Smart Plans already, but if you don't, we're going to move into the library. Okay. Now, you're going to see some featured Smart Plans up at the top. And then we're going to slide down a little bit and find those Keller Williams 10 smart plans that KWRI provided to us. So my top five favorite are the monthly neighborhood nurture, the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture, the quarterly call plan, <clears throat> the birthday smart plan, and the home anniversary smart plan. And all five of those are listed on your resources guide. If you're watching us on YouTube, that's gonna be down in the description box below the video, okay? So if you don't have the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture, all you need to do is click add smart plan. And Jose was asking at the top of the class about creating his own smart plans. We're gonna look at that as well. But before you do create your own smart plan, come here into the library and make sure that no one has already created that for you. So say you wanted one for a new year, New Year's Day, New Year's greetings with text, email, right? It's got all kinds of smart plans that have already been created that are editable. So if you don't like their exact verbiage, you can change it, right? Um, towards the middle of the month, I will be creating a smart plan for the first quarter of 2023. That is hard to say. I'm sure I'm going to have a hard time writing that as well. Um, that will cover the holidays from January through the end of March. 
and it will be a series of emails. I did one for 2022 as well um, that a lot of people have loved and they asked for me to create one for next year. So I'm gonna do the first one as a quarter um, so that you guys can go to the library and download it. In order to find anything by me, you can search by author name and just type Monica Perry. And there you go. Um, if you ever forget that, you can always type your market center number. So Winston-Salem 994, Greensboro 509, Chapel Hill 685, Durham 1033. I will have those all in the um, titles of the smart plans that I published to the library. Um, so yeah, check out what other people have done. I like to say that KW is a company of R&D, rip off and duplicate. Um, because if somebody else has already done it, why recreate it, right? Just go get theirs and use that. Um, Kimber is a good person to follow too. She makes some really good smart plans as well, okay? Um, but that being said, you just download the smart plan and then you can put your people on it. The quarterly call plan is super important. Um, they say that we should talk to everybody in our MET database at least once every 90 days. And so the quarterly call plan makes that easy and systematic for you to do. So let's say you did go ahead and add that smart plan to your library and you have a bunch of contacts that have um, phone numbers that we're going to be calling. I'm gonna go into that smart view of demos real quick. Check in the chat. So say I wanted these 35 folks to be on my quarterly call plan. I can select all, select bulk action, add them to the smart plan, search for my quarterly call, click select. Okay, now these people are missing phone numbers, but I'm just gonna say remove, remove contacts with errors there. So now I have the ability to start everybody now. That means I'm gonna get 13 tasks that say to call this person. It's going to delay for 90 days and then it's going to tell me to call them again. Then it's going to delay for 90 days and it's gonna tell me to call them again, right? I could start them all on the following date and you can do this with any smart plan. So if you have a smart plan that is made to start on a specific date, then you can choose that date right here or I can stagger start them. So this is what I like to do with the quarterly call plan because say I was adding 201 contacts, say I joined the 201 club and got 201 contacts in. If I started everybody now, I would have 201 tasks to call these people. I don't wanna have that many tasks at one time. I would feel completely overwhelmed by that. Maybe I wanna call 10 a day, right? Then I could set this to do 10 per day. So I would get 10 tasks each day to call those people. Does that make sense? So I really like that stagger start functionality. Cool. Questions on that? You guys are very quiet. Okay. So you can start people on smart plans right here from within the smart plan. So say I wanted to do this one, I could just add contacts. The reason I really like to do it from the contacts app with itself is I think it's easier, especially since you can do up to 500 at a time. So if you just worked really, really hard and got 300 people into your database and got them all with addresses and their neighborhoods established and you wanted to put them all in the monthly neighborhood nurture smart plan, I would rather be able to add all 300 of them at one time to that smart plan instead of having to do it 20 at a time, which is what you would have to do from here. Um, you can only see 20 at a time. So you'd have to select all, then move forward, then select all, and then move forward. And that would just take forever. And you can only do 40 at a time. Um, so I don't wanna have to do it that way. That's just my personal preference. I think that would take too long. So just do it from the contacts. It's a lot easier. So you can also see, I'm going to look up monthly neighborhood. Who is on a smart plan currently? So here's my monthly neighborhood nurture smart plan. There's a little eye showing me that three, 
people are on my monthly Neighborhood Nurture Smart Plan. And from where I've taught this class for years now, I get lots of monthly Neighborhood Nurture Smart Plans because I told people that they are welcome to put me on them and they are welcome to put me on them as well as you are welcome to put me on your smart plans. Um, but if you have not yet added yourself as a contact in command, please go ahead and do that. I always put myself on any smart plan that I'm going to send out so I can make sure that it's firing as intended. Um, I also created myself an account on my website so that I can see what that interaction looks like from the agent's perspective as well as the client perspective. Um, so I think it's really important to use yourself as a test. Make a fake Gmail account if you want to, like I did for the dogs. I have my kids on smart plans. I have my mom on smart plans, my brother and my sister-in-law on smart plans so that they can see them and give me feedback of what they would rather see and stuff like that. So if you have teenagers, use them to your advantage. Um, I use them for real estate all the time. So um, check that out if you have not yet already added yourself. So any questions on that? Oh, what? I do have a question. Can yeah, we you control when, like the date, say that you do like a, a bi-weekly neighborhood nurture plan, can you control it uh, to where I want these to go out on Sundays instead of Fridays? Uh, no, because it's going to fire off the number of days. Does that make sense? So the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture is going to go out every 14 days. So if you started on a Sunday, 14 days it should continue to go out oh, on a Sunday. Gotcha. No, no, that's perfect. I didn't realize that. So whenever I played with it, I didn't uh -huh. realize that I set it up. I must have set it up on a Friday because it oh. all comes out on Fridays. Okay. Oh, there you go. Thank yep. you. You're welcome. And that being said, this the time of day too. So if you set up a smart plan at five o'clock in the afternoon, it's probably going to come out around five o'clock um, ongoing. Now, they're working on huge updates for smart plans, but they do not give us dates um, for when anything is going to come out in case something is not ready when they said it was uh, going to be or when their target was going to be. Um, but we, you know, the hope is that we're going to have like I want this step to go out on this date between 10 and 12 p 10 and 12 a.m. I want this step to go out on this date between 2 and 4 p.m. Do you know what I mean? So they're working on that kind of stuff too. And hopefully we'll get that sooner rather than later because I've definitely been waiting on it. But for right now, just kind of guess, if, especially if it's a repeating smart plan, whatever day you started on and however many days it repeats, it's going to repeat kind of in the same timeline and day that you're starting it from. So in other words, don't start smart plans at 11 p.m., right? You can build them, just don't start them yet. Set a task for yourself to start them in the morning or whatever time of day you want to do it. Um, but text messages from Twilio, those only go out between 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Central time, Central time. 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Cool. For now, at least, before until we can get the timing of the smart plans. Questions on that? Good. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to create your own custom smart plan. So I'm going to click create in the upper right corner. We're going to give it a name. Jose, if you could unmute and tell me, you, you, I know that you said you were trying to do a specific smart plan for something, so I want to show you how to do it. Yes, I'm paying attention. Thank you. Um, I was trying to, I wasn't thrilled about any of the preset templates for Thanksgiving, and so I was trying to do my own Thanksgiving card, and so I did the card, and I just wanted to upload it say hey let's have this triggered on thanksgiving day and have that go out to the people that are assigned to the smart plan so when you say you made your own thanksgiving card where did you mm -hmm. make that um i i do graphic design work and I, I was able to also just 
pull one off of a like a Canva style template. So like an image. Correct. Okay. So you wanted it to go out as an email. Is that right? Correct. Okay. So you would just click send email. Okay. And like I said, designs is separate from smart plans, but you can use the design within the smart plan. So you would click send email. You would say, happy Thanksgiving. I always like to do an emoji in my title or my subject rather. And then you would want to do the email type design. Okay. Then you would click select design. And if you just wanted to make it yourself, um, you could choose, you would have already made it in designs, but say that you just wanted to use this happy Thanksgiving one that was there already. You can just choose it and click got it. And I don't know what your image was, but it's going to bring up the design. And so if you made your image, you could literally grab this one by clicking it, now it's outlined and trash it. Drag your image widget over and then just add the image from your computer. I don't, I'm just gonna grab this picture of the beach. Obviously it would be whatever design you wanted it to be. Uh, I think that's too, picture's too big. Hold on, try to find something smaller. Everything wants to give me a hard time today. Okay. Well, it's just going to be irritable. Let me try this again. Okay. There. I'm just going to grab this one. We're going to pretend like that's your Thanksgiving image and replace and then click done. And then it'll drop it in to your thing for you. Everything's being really wonky. Hold on. I think I dropped it in the wrong spot there. Right, so then it's in your email. If you don't like what this says, then you just click the pin. These are merge fields, so it's gonna fill them with the contacts first name and you could just like delete all this, type what you wanted to type, hit done. And it would save whatever you typed and then send it. You would click save, you would click the X, you would save the changes. It would come back here and it would have your design and you would just send it out. So were you saying it wouldn't save it? So I ended up going in and customizing one of the one of the pre-built templates with, you know, just changing out the text, uh -huh. you know, just to just to make things simple. Uh, and I did that. And then I don't I must have. I mean, I'm assuming human error, but for whatever reason, it reverted back to the original text that was so in try this, something the for me. template when I tried to send it to myself. I tried sending it to myself first. Gotcha. So try this for me and let me know. You can just send me a text after you try it. Um, instead of trying to make the edits from smart plans, mm -hmm. go into your designs, which is a little paintbrush on the canvas and find that design that you were doing, like this Thanksgiving one, and go ahead and open it up in designs, change your image, I'm just gonna grab this one and save, and save it. And then hit the X and save it. That is also annoying, but um, it should save it for you. I'm gonna hit refresh to make sure that it updates. And then when you go to upload it, and if it doesn't work, it, there's a glitch and I'm gonna, I'll reach out to them and find out, select new design. Yeah. It's like they're not updating. Hold on. That could be a glitch that you're running into. Nope, there it was. It just took a time to load. 
So that's what it probably was. Maybe you're running into a glitch at the time. Um, technology, y'all, is never going to be perfect. Um, but just try to go to designs first and make the change and then pull it in and let me know if that works. And if it doesn't work, um, I'll turn it in for you. Okay. And, and, and I'm sorry. And there was an, another section where we could schedule that out to go out at a. Yeah. So you have to. Like you got to think about it as, as parts, right? We made the design and now we're adding the design that we made to the smart plan. Right. And so maybe I wanted this part to say happy Thanksgiving. And then I wanted it to delay for two days. And then I wanted it to send a text that says, I hope your Thanksgiving was wonderful, blah, 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 blah. And then I have my smart plan ready to go. So it's got the email, it's got the delay, it's got the text. Then I can take it and put all of my people on the smart plan. Okay, but is there... Is there a way to say go out on like let's say if I build it now to go out for Christmas, can I put Christmas as a day? Mm -hmm. Or you I would just come to here to your contacts. You would select the people. Let me take this off screen because I don't want YouTube to take my video down. Hold on one sec. And my internet is apparently just completely bogging out for some reason. Okay. That would be so then that would be the start smart plan on x date field yep. that i would use okay yep. got it if it would load everything is just like going at a snail's pace here sorry y'all and then lastly would i be able to do that like make that repeat once a year so i only have to build it once instead of yeah but would you want the one? exact same email to go out every year or would you want to change it up I mean, I, I guess after I have all my templates built, then I'll go in there and, and change them up. But I was just thinking about building something out, you know, one, you know, in one shot. Yeah, I get that. And and I caution you to make sure that you're offering timely curated stuff. Um, because I've been in this business for a very long time. And the stuff that we used to send out was just so generic like showing people what was happening in the market in california when they lived in north carolina who cares i don't care what's happening in california i mean i might care and you know the broad view of the world but when it comes to my real estate needs well i don't care i care what's happening right here what's market value here what's selling here right um and you have to be careful with the people that um are so used to everything being curated, right? You look pretty young. We're used to stuff being curated to us. So if you make it too generic, people will just start throwing you in spam, ignoring your emails, right? Um, but yeah, so you could take that smart plan that you've built now and set it to go off on Christmas Eve and hit confirm, right? Or when, whatever day it is that you're talking about doing. That's how it would work. But just make sure that you think about what time of day it is for right now, because it's probably going to run about the time of day that you send it. Copy. Thank you. You're welcome. So hopefully that helps. Um, OK, so I mean, building smart planes is really that easy. Like I said, you just create you can choose the steps that you want. There are smart plans for all kinds of stuff. Um, so check out the different things that it can do. And I know that it's going to be getting really big updates. Currently, the only triggers that we have that are in the contact card is the birthday and the home anniversary, right? And in order to trigger off of the birthday, you have to use KW's birthday smart plan. In order to trigger off of the home anniversary, you have to use KW's home anniversary smart plans because that's the one that's got the triggers built in. But they are working very diligently, I might add, to get it to where we can um, set stuff by dates and we can set stuff by time of day and we can set stuff to, to be a little bit more integrated. Currently, the only thing you can build it off of is delays, right? 
So like my holiday smart plan, it's like pumpkin carving tips, delay this many days. Don't forget to set your clock back, delay this many days. Happy first day of fall, delay this many days. Happy Veterans Day, delay this many days. Happy holidays, right? So it just like is built off of day delays. Um, but like I said, a lot of people like myself have already gone in and built them. And we got pretty, uh, let me find it. This is what I'm about to do for 2023 because I don't know when these date-based smart plans are gonna come out yet. Um, but you can see like I go through and use a spreadsheet to tell me like all the days of the year, this is Martin Luther King Day, this is Groundhog's Day, this is Valentine's Day, this is this day. And then I built the smart plan around this spreadsheet so that I could make sure that everything was dated correctly. But that just means you have to start it on the correct day also, right? So just keep that in mind when you're building out smart plans. Um, and I'm sorry that my internet is going so slow. That's very annoying. Um, what else, guys? So we've kind of gone through adding contacts, putting them on smart plans, what the smart plans look like when they get them, the importance of updating your marketing profile, um, going and getting other people's smart plans from the library and downloading them for your own use. I just caution you when you go get someone else's smart plans, make sure that you read through them. Don't just put people on them without looking at them. Um, let me find a good example of one. Um, like this one says for our team members only because they probably have it like customized to their team. So, I mean, you can really go and download it. Just make sure that you edit it. Does that make sense? Um, like my Facebook follow-up smart plan. I'll show you as an example. I think this one's mine. Mm -hmm. So, hi, is this contact first name? This one's not mine, this is someone else's. But make sure that, see, like, sorry to bother you, this is Derek Sanderson with Keller Williams Realty. You need to look at it because you need to change it to be your name, right? Or if it says, visit my website, monicaperry.kw.com, you need to change that to say, visit my website, danielleduke.kw.com, right? So make sure that anybody that, they, that you download, you go through, check through it before you send it. It's better than having to build it from scratch, but just make sure that you edit it to your own stuff, right? That makes sense. I have one question. So yeah. once you've created your smart plan and applied it, and then however you set it up, would you um, would your task list be on the dashboard? Like yeah, so if part of the smart plan was a task, Danielle, like this right here, it would just show up on your dashboard that you had a task. Um, let me discard that and go back. So if you had a step in there that was in fact a task, that task would end up right here like this one. Okay. And then so let's say um, like with the smart plans, so you could basically you could create one or find one and then edit one that would be off of like a transaction um, yeah. list. Mm -hmm. And then would the tasks be all, it's so it's just so like- So you're talking listed. about tasks for a transaction yeah. You'd probably do better using the checklist that exists in opportunities, which we're going to look at those tomorrow. Okay, cool. It's a great question, though. And we have asked for the checklist that exists in opportunities to become part of a smart plan also. But they, I mean, they do pretty good. So I'll jump in since we have extra time just to show you. Um, 
like I've already got my checklist set up here in command and opportunities, but say that this listing, this internet is just gonna be the end of me right now. Now what is going on with it? I'm like closing down everything I possibly can. I'm gonna turn my camera off for a sec, see if that helps. Okay, so see, this has zero of seven checklist items completed. And so say I wanted this to get, be due today at 12. That will create me a task that is due today at 12. And so what they're working on right now is, so there it is, there's that task for myself. Right now, contact task and opportunity task are separate entities, but they're working on bringing that together. So it's called ta the task unification process or whatever. So they're working on bringing it together where it'll all be in one spot. Um, but for now, you just filter through on the home screen widget. And then when you're here in the actual task applet itself, you can use the filters to look at contact tasks versus opportunity task. Okay, awesome. And then so, we're another one really quick. So yeah, once they have those, like with this task list, so say you're in your opportunity tasks and you have multiple property li like listing or mm -hmm. um, listings, like will it be just a checklist like this or will it be by like, can you categorize it by like property? You see what I mean? So it'll show you who it is, right? So initial open house scheduled for this person. So okay. it'll actually be kind of based off of the person that's in the opportunity. Yeah. Um, so you'll know which one it is. Okay. Um, or whatever the opportunity name is. Like this one is listing 600 quarter staff road. So you'll see it. You'll see the opportunity name too. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What else, guys? It's your time. Ask any question you want. We've got 12 minutes. You can have 12 minutes of your day back or you can ask questions. Nothing. When's the next um, session that you're doing on Wednesday? I'm doing one tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be doing opportunities and um, opportunities checklists and the actual opportunities, like how do I do a transaction? What's the workflow? How do I docu-sign the paperwork? And usually what I do is I do the opportunities portion in the first half of class and the docu-sign part in the second, um, because not all of my market centers use docu-sign, so they can drop out um, if they don't use it. But we'll look at setting up the checklist. I'll give you guys my checklist. Um, that you can copy and paste into your command and we'll look at all the different moving parts and pieces of opportunities, take a quick break, and then we'll go into DocuSign signing. Gotcha. So, because last year I remember they did like 10 days of Keller Williams or something like that, like leading up to Christmas. And I only signed up for this or popped into your class because I saw you posted it on Facebook, but mm -hmm. I didn't get any emails about it. Which market center are you in, Whitney? Uh, Durham. Yeah, I just joined your market center. Oh, okay. so I'm your market center tech trainer now. The class you came to last year was a regional class. Oh, okay. And so it was open to the whole region, but now I'm actually in your office as your market center tech trainer. So you have access to me all the time. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> yep. So if you guys don't know, since we do have a couple of minutes, kwtechcoach.com is you guys website that I have built for all of my market centers. Um, my cell phone number is on here. You can schedule a consultation with me on here. A consultation does not have to be scheduled because you have a question. If you have a question, just text me and I will try to answer it for you via text. If I can't, I'll say, hey, I'm going to have 10 minutes at 2.30 this afternoon. If you can hop into Zoom, I'll help you. Um, but usually I can answer almost everything through text unless something's just like broken. Um, 
but it's got my upcoming classes, my calendar for you guys, what all boot camp covers, Whitney, which might be helpful to you, like what we're covering each day. It's got a, a recent um, video, so I'm about to replace this with last week's um, holiday postcard video when we get off of this call. I'm going to have my lunch and update all this and put up a new video here for you guys. Um, it's got the path to get paid, which is under how to do a transaction. So that's what that looks like. So it's got a lot of stuff on here for you. Tax websites, Facebook groups that you guys should join. I've got all of the forms for you if you just want a quick way to download the forms. Um, we've got a link to boot camp. This is where I will be putting the boot camp videos up. Um, hopefully YouTube will stop taking them down. What did they take down last week or last month? They took down day five. Um, so hopefully they will stop taking my videos down because they're saying I'm showing people's contact information. It's happening to all of us technology trainers, but um, it's all here for you guys if you need it. Got eight minutes. What you guys got? Nothing. I got nothing. But thank you so much, Monica. You're so welcome, Danielle. Thank you. All for right. I'll see you tomorrow. That sounds great. All right, guys, I'll let you have eight minutes of your day back. If I get to see you tomorrow at 10 for opportunities, Wednesday, agent site, mobile app, Thursday, designs and campaigns, Friday, everything that we didn't discuss, and open QA. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, too. All right. Bye.